Uh, Tim, you ought to be in here a couple weeks ago. They got a sucker with a scorpion inside it. Oh. It's afraid to eat it, though. You're welcome. Okay, let's make up our minds here. I have a shot still. Got it, man? All right. Well, we're going to ask for the to come take the bread of life to us. Love you. Anyway, thank you, young people. That excited the old fat man. <laughs> Good to be here. It's good to be at God's house. It's good to be Amen. saved. Yeah. And know that if I never wait to see the light of another day, that uh, I don't have anything to worry about. Let's mm -hmm. Not because I'm good, or not because of anything that I've done, Brother Ricky, but of what God done for me. Uh, I guess proper English would be what He did for me. Uh, when I was just a lad of a boy bowing at an old-fashioned altar. Uh, left home, didn't really plan on coming here, and uh, we kind of got to a stop sign and where we thought we was going on, and, and God kind of directed us to turn, and, and this is kind of where we ended up. Glad of that. Uh, put that on their heart. We're serving an amazing God. Amen. And to think that He loved us enough that He would send His Son all the way from the portals of the glory world to die for us on the cross of Calvary. Take our place, pay our, the debt of sin uh, that, brother, that we couldn't pay. That's right. Amen. And then had the power to come out of that grave on the morning of the third day victorious. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. If you will, winning the victory over death, hell, and the grave. Folks, we're living in trouble sometimes. That's right. And uh, I, again, it's good to be here, and we thank you for the opportunity to stand up and praise our God amen. because He's worthy right. uh, to be praised. And I understand that they are going to uh, take this, and it'll be going out to folks that were unable to attend. So God bless you wherever that you're at. And I hope that He uh, blesses you and that if you have a need, that God meets that need. Amen. But we're living in trouble sometimes. And there's things going on that uh, we have no control over and nothing we can do about. Uh, but that's nothing new to our God. That's right. Amen. Right. He's yeah. still on the throne. He yeah. still has all power. And uh, as we begin to kind of study a little bit this morning, uh, God directed us to some scriptures, and we're going to read a few verses, and then we'll try to bring you a little thought. Uh, in Jeremiah chapter 2, uh, verse 1 says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, say, Go cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown. And uh, he, we're going to skip down for time's sake because we've got several things that we would like to look to this morning. In verse 5, Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity... Uh, have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and are become vain. Yeah. Uh, so God said, all right, uh, I, I remember when you were following me. I remember after that I had given you a, a, a great salvation as he delivered the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. Uh, I remember after that we went through the Red Sea and in the wilderness and uh, you was eating the manna uh, and the quail that we furnished for you, uh, that God provided the water that you drank uh, that came forth from the rock. Uh, uh, I remember those things and how you followed me then. Uh, uh, but what is it uh, uh, that's caused you to turn away? Amen. Uh, that was a question that he was asking uh, in Ezekiel 
He said like this. Uh, and, and kind of along the same lines. Uh, the Bible uh, uh, there, uh, uh, if we can turn and find it right quick in the 33rd chapter, uh, and the verse 31, I believe it is, and they come and the people say, uh, and they come unto thee as the people come up, and they sit before thee. Now this is, uh, God had told him, this, uh, again, we went back to the first verse of that 33rd chapter. Uh, it says, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, uh, speak to the children of thy people. Uh, we're not talking now to the world. Hey, we're talking to God's people this morning. Uh, and he said, and tell them, uh, and they come unto thee as the people. This is verse 31 again. Come up, and they sit before thee as thy people, uh, as my people. Uh, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. Uh, for with their mouths they shew much love, uh, but their hearts goeth after their covetousness. Uh, uh, in Matthew, uh, Jesus quoted uh, Isaiah when he said, uh, uh, with their heart, with their mouths, uh, uh, they worship me, but their hearts uh, are far from me. But now we want to get to Micah chapter 6. Uh, if you want to turn, uh, uh, and we'll try to get a thought from there. Uh, uh, Micah chapter 6. Uh, uh, and we'll begin reading with verse 1. Uh, uh, Micah chapter 6, verse 1. Uh, hear ye now what the Lord saith. Uh, uh, Arise, now he's speaking to the prophet uh, uh, and telling uh, uh, Michael uh, uh, what he would have him to do. Uh, uh, he said, Hear ye now uh, what the Lord saith. Arise, uh, uh, contend thou before the mountains uh, and let the hills uh, hear thy voice. A uh, uh, preacher, why would he do that? Uh, uh, well, let me tell you something. Uh, he created the mountains uh, uh, and he created the hills. Uh, uh, and friend, uh, he created the rocks uh, uh, and you say, what does that have to do with anything? When Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on the colt and the people were saying Hosanna to the king and the people tried to tell him tell him to have them be quiet. He said if these people hold their peace up the rocks would cry out. A preacher, do you believe that? You better believe I do. I believe the rocks this morning can cry out. I believe the mountains and the hills uh, uh, can speak. Uh, if God told them to, uh, uh, they get up uh, and walk around. A uh, uh, preacher, you're crazy. Uh, I may be, uh, uh, but I'm crazy about Jesus uh, uh, this morning. Uh, uh, and I know that He uh, is still able uh, uh, to reach down uh, and to save uh, and to revive. Uh, in the 85th Psalm uh, and the 5th verse of uh, uh, the 85th Psalm, uh, verse 6, uh, I believe it is uh, uh, that David said, Well, thou not uh, uh, revive us again uh, that thy people uh, uh, may rejoice in thee. Oh, how we need revival. Amen. In the day that we're living. Now let's read that verse now again. Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise, contend thou before the mountains and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, of the Lord's controversy. And ye strong foundations of the earth for the Lord had the controversy with his people. And he will plead with Israel. O my people, what have I done unto thee? And where in have I wearied thee? Ha, a testify against me. Ha, a, for I brought thee up ha, out of the land of Egypt ha, and redeemed thee out of the house ha, a, of servants. Ha, a, and I sent before thee Moses, ha, a Aaron and Mary and Miriam. Ha, a Aaron and Miriam. Ha, oh my people, ha, a, remember now that Balak, ha, a, what Balak king of Moab ha, a, consulted ha, and what Balaam ha, a, the son of Beor answered him ha, a, from Shem and from Gilgal uh, that ye may uh, know the righteousness of the Lord. Uh, wherewith shall I come uh, before the Lord uh, and bow myself uh, before the high God? Uh, shall I come before him uh, with burnt offerings and calves of your own? Uh, will the Lord be pleased uh, with thousands of rams uh, or with ten thousand uh, of rivers of oil? Uh, shall I give my firstborn uh, for my transgression uh, of the fruit of my body uh, for the sin of my soul. Uh, he has shewed me uh, the old man 
What is good and what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. So if I read correctly, get where I can't see. I went to thy doctor just a couple of weeks ago and said, Doc, I can't see with him and I can't see without him. And I'm getting where I can't hardly read. My vision must be changed. I need to change my prescription. And he looked and he said, well, old friend, ain't a thing I can do until you go get those cataracts took off. Then we'll worry about changing it. So if I messed up, I can only apologize for my failure. But God's Amen. never failed. Amen. My mistakes, God don't make them. Amen. 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 But God told his men, Amen. he told Micah, he told Isaiah, he told Jeremiah, and then Jesus himself said it in Matthew when he quoted the old prophet and said, my people, they come before me and they claim they praise me with their lips but their heart is far from me. And so now God asked the question and told his man to go before his people and contend with them and ask the question. So my question this morning in my thought would be what has God done? Listen, we're in as he wearied us. What has God brought or done against us that's caused us to lose our zeal and our fervor, our prayer? Listen, the desire to come out to his house and to serve him and to testify and to shout and to sing and to praise his sweet name. Listen, he said, I did. The children of Israel, I brought you up out of Egypt. Brother, he didn't bring me out of Egypt. Amen. But those people, listen, he may have given them natural freedom, but they were still at a point where that God gave the law and they were accountable to that law and they were able to keep it. Listen, and if they did not keep that law to the letter, if they did not offer their yearly sacrifice, if they did do uh, the things required of them, uh, then they uh, would die uh, and go to a place that's called hell. Uh, but let me tell you what he did for me. Uh, when I was a lad of a boy, uh, he reached that's down and said, uh, and lifted me out of the miry clay uh, wow. and set me on a solid rock. Uh, amen. Uh, and established my going. Uh, have I been everything I should be? No. Uh, have I done everything I should do? No. Uh, have I said everything I should say? No. No. Right. But amen, let me tell you the good part of this morning. He did more for me than he did for them. Because yeah. when he saved me, he gave me eternal life. Amen. Yeah. amen. He didn't save this body. He didn't deliver it. It's going to lay down. The doctor right. says, right now, your cancer's behaving. One of these days, it'll progress to the point where it can feed itself. And the treatments we're giving you won't help anymore. And then it's over. Well, let me tell you what. When they think it's over, it's just beginning. Amen. Amen. To be absent in the body is to be present Amen. with the Lord. Amen. So, friend, this morning, when he reached down and saved the soul of a little eight-year-old boy, honey, let me tell you what he did. He wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. He took away my condemnation. Amen. A friend and made me an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Yes, but let me tell you what, this morning we still let him die. Yeah, amen. Yeah. We still fail him. Yeah. It seems like the more uh, that he does for us, uh, uh, the least, uh, less that we do for him. Yeah. Uh, the more he blesses us, uh, the less we praise him, praise him and stand up and shout yeah. his praises. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I get to thinking, Brother Ricky, we can all, most of us remember, there's some young people here. Man, it's good to see y'all here this morning. God loves y'all. Amen. The little people, the young people wanted to come to him. There's something about Jesus that just grew the young people. Yeah. And they would come to him and that would aggravate and frustrate 
the religious crowds of that day. It does yeah. today. They don't want them in the sanctuary. They want to put them off somewhere right. yeah. uh, uh, in a nursery and keep them out and, uh, and don't want them to be around. Jesus told them, He said, Suffer the little children yeah. to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Right. He said, Don't you sit them in a nursery? Amen. They might cry and interrupt the service. Honey, let me tell you something. I remember old preacher said, If I can't preach loud enough that you can hear me preach over a crying child, then there's something wrong with me. Amen? It's not going to hinder the service. Let that, I tell you what. Bring them in. Amen. But those old folks would come together. We was coming up the road this morning past a little church out here on the side of the mountain. And I just kind of got excited. I looked over here. was it had to be an old farmer. Had on probably the best he had. Had on a denim jacket and it was worn and gray. It looked like he would have been in style. That's what the young people want to do today is go get something that's wore out. They will stone wash it, they bleach it, they do everything in the world, hanging on clothesline, probably shoot it with a shotgun. They make it do everything they can to look ragged. Stuff that we have, we call it rags, Brother Ricky, and we we's ashamed to wear it. We try to throw it away and get something better. We could have been rich if we decided the junk yeah, that we yeah, threw away, yeah, amen, yeah. and sell to a lot of these young people today. But he was walking across the parking lot heading into the church building. And I looked at him and I thought, boy, you know, amen. He had a desire to go. I can remember when those old people came in and they didn't have much. They didn't have a nice suit. They didn't have a nice air conditioned automobile to ride in. I can remember when we was a child and they had day services in revival. Daddy had to work. My grandpa had stock racks on the back of his truck and those stock racks got years. So him and Ma and Mama sat in the cab, and that's all the room there was. Up, uh, well, it, a baby. Mama would hold a baby in her lap. The rest of us, we got in uh, in the stock racks, and you put your hands on and stood up and looked, tried to look out over the cab and look and see where he's going, and, and was careful where he put your hands. Had to kind of watch where he stood and and and, uh, and 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 where your hands was and everything like that. And, they got to church and they was just proud to be there. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes they was already praising the Lord and shouting and testifying out in the yard before they even got in the building. And when they got in the building, the church got started. Sometimes during the song service, it wasn't unusual to hear some old brother get to amen and then some sister start shouting. Or while the preacher was preaching. And when they got through and they started singing those old hymns of the church and Amazing Grace. Yeah. Amen. They, they just about uh, uh, take the roof off of that thing. Mm -hmm. Because they thought of what God... But listen, they was thankful yeah. to have some beans and maybe some cornbread and a little yeah. meal and lard. and You know, they worked for what they had. Right. They didn't have much, but they was thankful for it. God's blessed us Amen. so much today. He, that's what He said. He said, look where I brought you from. Amen. Look what I gave you. Look what I've done for you. Yeah. Amen. And why is it? What have I done wrong that you don't praise me like you used to? How in have I done to you anything that would cause you to stop wanting to come out to my house? People used to want to come to God's house. Yeah. Amen. Amen. People that covenanted with this congregation come. <coughs> And to keep house for God and watch over it and care for it and give it the same privilege over them. And if you call them up and ask why weren't you there and what's going on, they'll tell you it's none of your business. Let me tell you something, it is. Yeah. Amen. Amen, it is your business. The Bible tells us, listen, we're to bear one another's burdens. Yeah. We're to love each other. We're to fellowship. We're to care about our love. Listen, COVID's real. I'm not going to say it's not. Right. Amen. I've seen people die with COVID. Yeah. <coughs> but there's people dying every day with sin. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <coughs> you fall out of a tree out here and 
break your neck deer hunting and COVID kills you. Yeah. They blame everything on COVID now. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> they get some money out of it. Yeah. COVID did it. There's a difference in dying from it and dying with it. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> There's people dying with sin every day. Yeah. And going to a place that's called hell. Now, if our children was in the hospital on a respirator with COVID, we'd be calling everybody. We'd be on Facebook. We'd be you wearing the phone out. We'd be doing everything we could do. Amen? To get people to pray for them. I remember when a certain young lady had some sickness. And it was not just around here, it was all over the country and out of this country. There was people everywhere. Amen. Concern. Let me tell you what. These young people here today, no doubt, that not yet has been saved. Right. Amen. May not have reached the age of accountability, but they may be some children. You know what? You say, I'm older than that. I don't care if you're a hundred. You are children to God. God loves you. God sent His Son from the portals of the glory world to die for you. And God's sitting on His throne right now and yeah. sending the precious Holy Spirit to come and speak to and invite you to come and be saved. Yeah. That's what this is all about. Yeah. But He said, "What? Well, listen, if you're here this morning and you're lost, I can get it. I, I can kind of see that you're sitting there and you're confused and you don't know what's going on and you've not experienced it and you've not felt it. But I have. Amen? I mean, if he'd have left some of the people down there in Egypt and they hadn't been delivered, Brother Cecil, amen, they didn't know what it was like right. to be out there eating milk and honey. Right. Right. And man, I quail. Right. And drinking from the rock. They've never experienced it, but we have. Right. We have. So what's God done to what, listen, what's God done to us that's caused us? What Jeremiah said that our fathers have turned and gone after vanity and are become vain, useless, worthless. Amen. So what are, are we worthless this morning? Are we useless this morning? Amen. Have we lost our power? Have we lost our effectiveness? Have we lost our joy? Have we lost our testimony? What did God do to cause us to do that? Is it His fault? That's what He's asking. Why? Why? What's the problem? Amen. He said, testify against me. Tell me, what have I done? And then I begin to think, wow. God, you've done nothing to let me down. God, you failed me in no way whatsoever. That's right, amen. God, you've not been unfaithful to tell me. Tim's let you down. Tim's failed you. you. Say, preacher, you're a preacher. You admit that, yep. Mm -hmm. Brother Paul said, "That that I would do, I do not. Right. And that that I would not, that I do. Yeah. And as long as we're in this flesh, we'll let him die." Because it's imperfect. <coughs> and it will see. It will make mistakes. <coughs> but I'm glad that I have an advocate that's sitting there on the right hand of the Father and when I call on Him, Man. 
He makes intercession for me. Amen. When I say, God, I'm sorry that I let you down. God, you didn't do nothing. It's my fault. It's Tim's fault. It's not your fault. It's mine. And I let you down. I just got caught up in the things going on around me. I just got so involved in the world and the things that's there. Listen, if we spent half as much time on our knees praying as we spend on Facebook, I mean, let's be honest, folks. Amen. Amen. I realize that's good you can do on there. You you testify on there. You request prayer for people on there. You can do things like that on there. But I'll tell you what. If we'd spend as much time on our knees praying as we do, looking at all the junk that's going on, I just got. I don't. I, you know. I don't even. I don't turn it on. I don't watch it. I don't want to see it. Because it distracts us. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It's worthless. It's useless. Amen. Preacher, the negative, uh, the message seems to be negative. You know, you're down. And I thought that just about every word that I read in the scriptures where the apostles went to God's people, there were problems. There was issues. There was trouble. They were discouraged. They were down. Uh, they had problems. People was talking about them. People was mistreating them. And they just they get to the point that they feel helpless and they, they feel and, and and they and he told them, he said, God through his man, he's like, What's wrong? You're saved. You're God's child. You're an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen. Right, amen. This my my hope's not down here. Amen. amen. My home's not down. I'm a pilgrim and a stranger. I'm passing through this whole lowland of sin and sorrow. I'm on my journey headed home. And one of these days, Brother Ricky, this whole body's going to wear out. Amen. I'll take my last breath. And before this body hits the ground, let me tell you what, I'll be with Jesus. Preacher, do you believe that? Amen. You better believe I do. Yeah. Jesus was hanging there on the cross. And let me tell you this. I, I know you know this, but I just want to remind you because I like saying it. They did take his life. He did. Amen. Yeah. They didn't have enough power right. to take his life. Right. That's right. He laid those hands out there knowing what the pain was going to be. He allowed them to stand him up there and at any time he could have called 12 legions of angels. He could have said it's enough. I ain't going to do this. And he kind of addressed that just a little bit in the garden when he prayed because he knew what was fixing to happen. And he said, Father, if it be thy will, if there's any other way, this was the human part of him. I mean, right. he's in the flesh just like we are. Right. Yes. I mean, Brother Cecil, that ain't no fun to go in the hospital and get cut on this. Hey, no, it ain't it. Not a bit of fun. And after you've been there a time or two, and you got to go back, and you kind of know. But see, he knew what's fixing to happen. He said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. And then he looked down through the ages of time, and he saw you and me. Hopeless, helpless, without a hope in the world. And he said, nevertheless, not my will but that be done. So he's hanging there on the cross. Mm -hmm. uh, he's suffering like nobody has ever suffered. Right. 
He's been laughed at. He's been spit on. He's been mocked. He's been slapped. They've plucked out the hair. They've plucked and took a core out. He's beard.